I'm Diana Hart and I am the garden director at Poplar Village Gardens. This is a three plus acre permaculture food forest that's grown on the grounds of a level four pad to quality childcare home. Um, this childcare home is including the gardening and permaculture activities as part of our educational program. We also donate our food to the local food bank so that it can feed the community. Spring is the time of year when gardeners get the fever long before it's appropriate to put seeds in the ground. Um, here at Poplar Village Gardens, we celebrate spring by doing pea planting day on St. Patrick's Day. It's one of the cold weather crops that we can grow now um, that will do better in this weather than it will in the warm weather. And we're going to take a look. We planted a bunch of seeds on St. Patrick's Day and what we basically did was we laid our seeds down here instead of disturbing the soil we laid the seeds down and then covered it with straw now um, it's been pretty cold but i am looking under the straw what we have in these beds up here are peas and uh mustard greens and they are not sprouting yet not a surprise uh, we had a lot of rain after we planted these so they got good water and this bed is planted the same One of the things that we like to do is we like to practice sustainable practices, which means in this bed, the chair is going to be the support for the vining peas. So after this chair became unusable as a chair, it is having a second life. One of the super cool things that happens in the spring. I planted a lot of native plantings in the garden as well. In this area right here is our sage hedge, but I like to go through. I'm kind of into foraging and I like to go through. So this is the time of year if you think that you don't have a crop. There are foods that you can forage for like these dandelion greens before the blossom comes on. Those are just perfect for human consumption and there are some other things like that. But when we leave the leaves on until the nights are consistently 50 degrees or above in order to preserve the insects that might be nesting there and the same way with the growth. But if you look here, you can kind of poke around and you can see this is a native plant that has already started to grow up in this area um, from last year. And then there is other growth, more dandelion greens. And our, of course our spring bulbs, those are not native, but it will give us some color this spring. These are new this year. They're kind of cool because you can step into the keyhole shape and you can work around like this. So you've got a lot of things within arm's reach. Um, the other thing that's neat about them is that they have a wire basket inside of them. This is where you throw your compost. Um, what's really cool about this is that you put your compost in here. That is an invitation to the earthworms to come and have dinner. Then they climb out, come into your garden bed, and deposit their worm castings, which are so expensive if you have to buy them. And they are automatically fertilizing your soil without you having to do anything other than put your uh, kitchen scraps here. Um, this bed was planted with uh, peas and uh, radishes, I think. And we may have something coming up here. Radishes have a short um, days to maturity. It's about 30 days till maturity. So once they start coming up, it won't be very long before we'll be able to um, harvest.